Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex Lokes and today I am in beautiful Oakville, Ontario in McCraney Valley and I wanted to talk about light meters. Yes, I am on to my third meter review for Raveni Labs and their latest invention is absolutely incredible. Not only in what it can do, but its form factor. So let's walk and we can talk a little bit more about it. And if you're anything like me, your choice in meter is as equally fickle as it is your choice of camera, lens, and film stock. And I totally get it. There are some meters I like, and there are some meters I don't like. And in the end, it really has nothing to do with the specs or what it can and cannot do. It has everything to do with the form factor and how it feels in my hand. I love my Goss and Luna 6F. I love my Pentax Spot Meter 5. But there's one problem with both those meters. The issue is that these meters are handheld. But you're going to say, but wait, aren't all meters handheld? Well, yes, see? Pick up my Luna 6, take the meter, dial it in. But then if my camera's around my neck, I have to put this down to pick up and use my camera. And the same goes, if even more, for my spot meter. Take it in, dial it in, do the settings. Now, this I mostly use with camera on a tripod, but to then manipulate the camera, this has to go away, and potential to have the settings change while it's in my pocket. So if I pull it out to double check, and the same problem almost with this. What if you had a meter that allowed you to let your hand still be a hand and take the meter reading? Well, that's where the Raveni Lab incident meter comes into play. But before we continue, let's take a closer look at this beautiful piece of equipment in the studio and I'll meet you a little further along the trail. And so here it is. This is the Raveni Labs incident meter and Matt has really outdone himself with the design and build quality of this new one. It's not as rough as his first one and far more refined than his second one. Mostly because you got this nice smooth plastic case and yeah, you can still tell that this has been 3D printed, but it looks a lot more professional than having that textured feel. So you have right here at your front, that's your reflective meter cell. It's the exact same one that you find in the hot shoe meter and the spot meter. So it's just really great that that is still an option. And up at the top, you have your reflective dome. This is for the incident metering, where you'd actually hold it in front of the subject you're taking a photo of, rather than standing back and metering the light coming off of it, you're metering the light falling on it. And that is a far more effective way to do flash, especially studio strobes. At the top, you have a full color OLED screen, works in any lighting condition from super bright, to very low and you have your four direction controller. This is the only external control and you have four directions and each direction has two functions. You have a short and a long push and each one does something a little bit different. Over here on the side, here is your port. This is where you can plug in a 3.5 millimeter um, phone jack that allows you to plug it into a sync cable to directly control studio strobes or you can put a wireless transmitter wireless transmitter in here that you can control flashes wirelessly you also have here there are your two double a two triple a batteries that power the thing you get about two hours worth of of um, operating life out of them and because they're much larger, they deal better with colder weather. Plus, if this thing is handheld, you can just stick it in your pocket and you've got your micro SD, um, micro USB connector in there to update your firmware. But yeah, it's, it's just really nice. And you have this um, elastic band here. You can, I like to hold it with three so that 
and it just fits nicely in your hands and your hands still work as hands. But yeah, it's really great. You got a lot of nice features and tech specs. I won't bother um, going through those. You can find those in the description below on it, but it has a lot of really good um, uses. You can do aperture priority, shutter priority, incident reflective metering. It also meters color temperature, which is super handy if you want to set white balance with your uh, digital camera. It gives it out in Kelvins, so you can do that custom, which is especially great if you are using flash and if you just don't trust your camera's white balance. But yeah, that's it. I really like the design. It's certainly unique, cuts an interesting figure, and you can see why I call it the knuckle duster. Now, that's not to say that the new incident meter is perfect. Despite the ease of use, comfort in the hand, and the ability to keep your hand to be able to manipulate the camera and quickly look at it, my biggest problem is, of course, the four direction joystick. Not that it's hard to use in any way, you just have to use it a lot to get in that muscle memory to figure out short push, long push. I like to do it by making sure that when I'm out using the meter, I have the manual open to that cheat guide where it tells you the shortcuts, short, long, and what does what. And eventually you'll get to know the ones you need to know. Another thing is that you need to remember on what mode you have it set on before you actually take it out. Are you going to be using it in reflective mode or incident mode? because I've had situations where I've gone out, I've used it, it was still in incident mode, and I was metering the light falling on my own body with my light source behind me. Well, needs to say, almost every frame on the roll was overexposed. I was able to recover a lot, but still, it's a bit of a duh moment. And it just shows that even film photographers who've been shooting as long as I have can still make mistakes. Well, at this point, you're probably thinking, great, you've hyped this thing up, but does it actually work? Is it accurate? Well, if you've used Reveni products before, you know that Matt has built a really good metering system. And the same can be said about the new incident meter. So yeah, it does work. And I got the photos to prove it. Reveni Labs incident meter, is it worth it? Well, the cost of this thing is about $250, which might put it out of the reach of some people. But you also have to remember what sort of value you get from this meter. You get a ton of features that are often in modern high-end studio meters that cost a lot more money. Plus, this is a brand new piece of equipment that is manufactured right here in Canada by a small business, the core of our local economy. It's new, it is constantly being updated, new features can come down with firmware updates, and Matt is really good at maintaining a good level of support and customer service for his equipment. He hand makes these meters himself in his lab. And as a friend, I really want to see him support. So if you want an idea for your Christmas list or for a photographer on your list and you have to come across this, and you know that they use a lot of cameras that require metering that don't have a built-in meter, this is a great option. It runs on two AAA batteries, so it lasts a long time. It's compact, it's well made, 
and it's accurate. But again, this isn't for everyone. If you don't do a lot of stuff with flash or you do a lot of reflective metering, need something a little more like accurate for like spot metering, this is not a good meter. There is the Riveni Lab spot meter, which I've also reviewed and the hot shoe meter as well. But I love this for like range finders, for my Mamiya M645, for my Holga, because it doesn't take up a lot of weight. I can just tuck it in my pocket, tuck it in my bag, and I don't have to worry about it. Plus I can get batteries for it anywhere in Canada, even if I'm in the backwoods and just need to go to a gas station, bam, there are AAA batteries. So you can check out the link in the description on where to buy it. And I also have included my written review and a link to the Raveni Labs incident meter manual. So until next time, shoot what you love, on what you love, with what you love. Don't give in to the hype. Thank you.